Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Challenge of the Yukon. Original air date is March 29th, 1950, and the title is Mystery of the Ridge. Hope you enjoy. Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On you huskies! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. You fellas and girls know a good food when you taste one. And here's what's so good about Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. They are made from only the premium grains of wheat or rice. And these choice flavor-rich grains are shot from guns, actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them bigger and better tasting. Yes, they're crisp, tender, delicious. Just see how good they taste tomorrow morning. Treat yourself to Quaker Puff Rice or Quaker Puff Wheat. Sergeant Preston rode along the trail toward Whitehorse, with the great dog Yukon King running alongside. It was spring, and the thaw had brought a great deal of activity to the great northwest country. (laughs) Suddenly, Preston heard a distant shot. He stopped for a moment, listening. A shot, King. We'll go along the trail a bit and see what we can find out about it. Get up, Lucky. Sergeant Preston, followed by King, rode at a fast pace until, as they rounded a bend in the trail, the bounty saw a figure lying on the ground and a horse grazing nearby. Hold on, hold on, steady. Huh. Not dead, King, but he's wounded and unconscious. Have to get my first aid kit. Do what we can for him, boy, and we'll take him to the nearest cabin. Sergeant Preston gave the wounded man first aid and tied him on his own horse. Then the Mountie, leading the other horse, continued along the trail until he came to a cabin. There he reined to a halt. Hold on, King. Easy, fella. Easy, man. Preston took the still unconscious man from the horse and carried him to the door just as it opened. Ned! Sergeant, what's happened to Ned? Better let me get him inside. Yes, yes, of course. The bedroom is through that door. Right. There. This her husband? Yes. Sergeant, I, is he He's old? unconscious, but he's still alive. I'm Lucy Dumb, and we settled here last fall. What happened to Ned? I, I heard a shot, and later on the trail I found your husband. It's a shoulder wound, rather serious, but the proper carry ought to pull through. I'll send a doctor from Whitehorse. This isn't more than three miles from town. But why would anyone shoot Ned? I, I don't understand. Maybe when he's able to talk, Ned can tell us something about it. Why was he heading up trail away from town, you know? Ned heard of a deserted claim up that way. Huh? He decided to go look at it. A claim here doesn't pay off very well. I see. Well, I'll go to town and get the doctor. I'll come back with him so I can question Ned when he comes to. I'll be back as soon as possible. By the time Sergeant Preston returned with the doctor, Ned Delman had regained consciousness. After the doctor had treated his wound and made him comfortable, the Mountie questioned Ned. What reason would anyone have to try to kill you, Ned? I don't know, Sergeant. I haven't any enemies as far as I know. Strange that someone would shoot you without reason. Did you see the man who fired the shot? No, the shot came from across the gully on the other ridge. I I was heading for the branch trail further on that led to that ridge to look over a claim. I heard about it last night in the cafe in town. The old sourdough who was working it gave it up and left when the thaw came. If you couldn't get anything much from the claim, why did you want it, man? I he was rather old and had a 
spell of sickness during the winter. Huh? I thought maybe he hadn't given it a chance. But I could work it along with the one we have here. I see. Old Mr. Higgins was awfully nice. He, he used to stop here sometimes during the winter on his way to town. Frank Higgins? Oh, well, yes, that was his name. He's been gone about a month now. They, they say he went to Selkirk. Strange you didn't stop to see me. I knew old Frank quite well. Did he come to say goodbye before he left? Oh, no. No, he didn't. Ned heard in town that he'd left. That's right, sir. Oh. I think King and I'll go over to Frank's place on the ridge and have a look around. Might get a line on the person who shot you. I'll stop on the way back to town. Come along, King. Let's get going. A short time later, Sergeant Preston and King reached the Higgins cabin. It was located on a stretch of level ground between a ravine and a low hill. Oh, buggy. Come on. King. The Mountie walked slowly about the cabin as his keen eyes took in every detail. Because of King's calm attitude and disinterested sniffing... Sergeant Preston concluded that there were no fresh scents to indicate the cabin's recent use. Well, boy, I say no one's been in this cabin since Higgins left. Let's look outside, King. Finding no signs to indicate that anyone had been near the cabin, Preston and King studied the level ground in the vicinity, as far as a tunnel into the hillside a hundred yards behind the cabin. No fresh scent, eh, King? Probably no one's been here since Higgins left. Well, we'll go along the ridge and find the tracks left for the person who shot at Doman. Let's go, King. Sergeant Preston and King thoroughly examined table land between the mountain and the ravine for marks that would show the place from which the shot had been fired at Ned Delman. Preston rode slowly and kept his eyes glued to the ground. Where the end of the ridge sloped downward into a gully, he pulled to a stop. Oh, Blackie. A puzzled expression on his face. Now, well, King, no sign of anyone. Nut Delman could have made a mistake, but he seems positive the shot came from this way. Yet I'm just as positive no one's been in this vicinity since Frank Higgins left. Well, we'll go back and have another talk with Delman. Let's go, boy. Get up, Blackie! Once more, Sergeant Preston and King stopped the Delman cabin. Oh, Blackie! Steady, fella. Wait here, King. Thanks. Find out anything, Sergeant? No, I didn't. There's nothing to show that anyone's been on that ridge since the thaw, Delman. What? But I swear the shot came from over there. I'd have no reason to try to prove you. I hope not. The fact remains, we found no sign of anyone having been there. That's strange. I agree with you, Mrs. Delman. It is strange. Tell me, Ned, who was it told you Frank Higgins had left a month ago and deserted his claim? Well, no one in particular. I heard the men in the cafe talking about it last night. Seen some prospect of passing through Whitehorse about a month ago, met Frank on the trail, headed for South. I see. But you didn't hear about it until last night. That's right. I just happened to mention at the cafe that I'd like to find another claim that had been already worked and what was nearby. Then I heard about old Higgins deserting his. I see. Well, I'll go into town and make inquiries there. Sergeant Preston rode to Whitehorse. His first move was to have a talk with the constable. He sat in the constable's office with King beside him. After relating what had happened, Preston remarked, It's a mystery to me, Sam, how and why Ned Delman was shot. Also, why there's a certain vagueness about Frank Higgins' sudden departure. I didn't even know he left until you brought it up a few moments ago, Sergeant. Old Frank didn't come into town very often. I'd like to meet at least one person Higgins spoke to about his decision to leave his claim. Say, I bet we could get some information at the trading post. Mike ought to know. All right, let's go. I'm ready. Come on, King. A short time later, the two Mounties entered the trading post with King at their heels. Well, well. Sure, and it's good to see you and King again, Sergeant. Thanks, Mike. And you, Constable. I suppose the two of you are needing some supplies. <laughs> I hear the Mounties stop and eat once in a while like the rest of us. We're uh, here for some information, Mike. Sure, and what is it you'd be asking me, Sergeant? What do you know about Frank Higgins? Frank Higgins, is it? Well, now it was a surprise to myself to hear old Frank up and pull stakes nigh on to a month ago. Especially with him owing me a bit of a bill. And him usually so prompt and careful like about paying in the past. That isn't like Frank Higgins to do a thing like that. That it isn't, but leave he did. Without as so much as a word of pardon to anyone seems like. What do you make of that, Sergeant? I'd rather not say yet, Sam. Tell me, Mike. 
What do you know about Ned Delman and his wife? They seem like a nice enough couple all in all. They've been around here only during the past winter, mind you. So I can't rightly say much about them. Mm. Well, thanks for the information. By the way, who told you Higgins had gone? Oh, I heard some of the men speaking of it. Seems some stranger met him on the trail and got talking to Higgins. He mentioned it when he was in town for a day or two. Did you see the stranger? No, I never laid my eyes on him. And nobody seems to remember much about him. Oh, well, I'll see you later, Mike. Let's go, Sam. So long. Come in again, Sergeant. The two Maltese went to the cafe and inquired, but found out no more than they had from Mike. As they walked back toward the constable's office, Sam was saying, I guess old Frank decided to pick up and leave without telling anybody about it. If he'd wanted to keep his departure and his destination a secret, Sam, it doesn't make sense he'd tell that stranger about it. That's true. And frankly, I'm more concerned about who tried to kill Delman than I am about Frank Higgins leaving town. That's the case we've got to try to solve. Sam, time. my opinion is that Frank Higgins and Ned Delman are mixed up in the same case. What's more, I don't believe that Higgins voluntarily left Whitehorse if he left it on. What do you mean? I'm convinced we'll solve the entire case involving Higgins' disappearance and the shooting of Delman when we solve the mystery of the ridge. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. When you're traveling up here in the Yukon, you never can tell what kind of a scary adventure you're going to have next. Like one time when it was just about dusk, and I was on the trail back from the dead Dutchman gold mine. I was just about... Hold up there. <laughs> what? It's an ambush. I'm trapped. Don't make a move. You want to stay healthy. I'm after one thing. That there gold. Gold? I don't have anything to do with a dead Dutchman gold mine, if that's what you think. Don't pull that. Where you got it hid? But I have no gold. Quit stalling. What's in them packages? Oh, well, that's the swellest tasting ready-to-serve breakfast cereal from here to Dawson. It's the cereal shot from guns. Guns? Guns? What? what? I mean that Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice are shot from guns. What good are those guns? Say, when the choice premium grains of wheat and rice are shot from those guns, they're exploded up to eight times normal size. What? Eight times? You betcha. That makes them bigger and better tasting. They're crisp. Tender with bang up nut like flavor, too, in every mouthful. But I'm after gold, buddy. How do I know there's Quaker puff wheat and Quaker puff rice in them packages you carry? Oh, that's easy to prove. Just take a look at these famous red and blue packages. We pack Quaker puff wheat and Quaker puff rice in a fine modern package with a sealed inner lining to doubly protect its flavor and crispness till it hits your table. Yeah? That's why the original, the one and only, wheat or rice shot from guns is never sold in bags or bulk. Sounds like the real McCoy. It sure is. As you fellas and girls know, too, your appetite strikes it rich when you pour out a heaping bowlful of those tenderly crisp, melt-in-your-mouth kernels and top them with milk or cream and fruit. What's more, Quaker-popped wheat and Quaker-popped rice give you fellas and girls added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. So every morning, enjoy this delicious, nourishing treat. Quaker popped rice or Quaker popped wheat. Now to continue. Sergeant Preston told the constable he was convinced that if the mystery of the ridge were solved, they'd find the solution to Higgins' disappearance and to the shooting of Ned Delman. When the two Mounties arrived at the constable's office, Sam said... What's the next move, Sergeant? I'll take King with me and inspect Higgins' mine. Meantime, I suggest you try to find someone here in town who can tell us more about that stranger. All right, just as you say. If I do happen to find out anything important, I'll ride out to meet you. Good. See you later then, Sam. Come on, King. The tunnel of the Higgins' mine ran back into the low hill for about 20 feet, then turned sharply to the right, forming an L. At the end of the L, there was a vertical shaft, or air vent, from the ceiling to the top of the hill... This shaft, about six or eight feet long, was large enough for a man to move up to the hilltop. A narrow wooden ladder ran from the floor of the tunnel up through the shaft, which had been recently dug. The opening on the hill was concealed by heavy brush. On the opposite side of the small hill, just down the slope from the air vent, 
was a weather-beaten trapper shack, long forgotten and deserted. Two rough-looking men were in the shack. One of them spoke. Gil, uh, you think that snooper Delman is alive after the bullet you put into him earlier today? Well, I couldn't tell from up there. He wasn't moving when that Marty took him away. You better go up and relieve Rusty's lookout, Steve. He's got to get to town for more supplies. Yeah, sure. It's a good thing Rusty is known well enough to go and come as he pleases in town without folks being curious. Yeah. <laughs> they figure he's busy at that phony claim of his half a mile from here. Yeah. Now that the Mountie is in town, it wouldn't do for us to be seen. He'd ask questions, maybe. You know, a month ago when I went to the cafe and said I was passing through and told that story about meeting the old man heading north, I didn't hang around long enough for anyone to get used to me. Good thing that Mountie didn't come in the mine shaft when he came back. You'd have put a bullet in him, too, eh? Huh? I know. Well, he he'd have got wise right away when he saw the new digging in the cross tunnel where the old man first made the strike. We'll be ready for him this time if he comes back. Huh? If he does come back and goes into the tunnel, look out can tip us off. And the other two can go around and cover the tunnel entrance. But two out there with guns and one at the top of the vent. <laughs> You'll be trapped. And we'll bury him right in there beside the old man. Yeah. Well, I'll go up and relieve Rusty now. Right. It won't take him long to get to town and back. The three men used a back trail that led from the shack so that they never had to go around the ridge near Higgins' cabin or the tunnel entrance. Rusty left and rode to the trading post in town. He entered the store while Preston and the constable were still at the cafe asking questions. This was before the Mountie and Dog had set out for the ridge. Hi, Rusty. Look, I didn't expect you back so soon. What do you mean, so soon? Well, the other day you bought enough supplies to last a week or more. <laughs> you must have the appetite of two or three men. That's my business, as long as I pay cash for what I get. Sure, there's no reason to be so touchy about it. Uh-oh. There goes the constable and Sergeant Preston into the constable's office. Sergeant Preston? Is he the Mountie you... I mean, is he in town? He sure is. Big as life itself. They were in here a bit ago asking about that stranger who told about Higgins leaving. And from what I figured, there's something in the wind, says I. Now, <clears throat> what is it you come in for, Rusty? Well, let's see. I, uh... uh there's the sergeant. He just come out. He's mounting up. Huh. I've heard a lot about that dog, is. I wonder where he's heading now. Ah, there he goes, heading out the main trail. Might be going to the Higgins place like as not. He knew Higgins and putting two and two together... Figure he's a bit worried about the old man. Now, uh, <clears throat> what was it that you said you want? Uh, nothing, nothing right now. I'll, I'll come back later. What's got into that one, I'd like to know. He beat it out of here like Lucifer was at his heels, that he did. Look at him go now. Racing up the street towards the back trail. Uh-oh. Here comes the constable across the street. Like as not, he'll ask me the same questions all over again. <laughs> Hello, constable. That man who left here sure seemed to be in an awful hurry, Mike. Did you pull a gun on him or something? <laughs> no, nothing like that, Constable. <laughs> At least I wouldn't be admitting it to you. I didn't get a chance to see who he was. Oh, that was some sort of odd prospector. Rusty something or other. Don't hang around with the others in town much. Oh? The funny thing, he come in saying that he wanted an order. Then when we saw the sergeant riding away through the front window, and I said something about him maybe going to the Higgins place, Rusty up and left here like a shot. He did. Oh, well... <clears throat> No, what can I do for you, Constable? Nothing, nothing right now. Goodbye, Mike. Well, great day. Must be the look on me face that's setting them all a-running. Glory be. Riding at a fast pace, Rusty reached the shack by the back trail and warned Gill and Steve about Preston coming out to the Higgins place. Later, as the three tense men watched from the brush on top of the hill covering the air vent, Sergeant Preston came into sight on the main trail with King running alongside... Steve instinctively raised his rifle, but Gill pulled his arm down. No, Steve. Unless you'll get away. Anyhow, you might hit him but not kill him. We couldn't get close to that big dog around me. That was a lucky shot I took this morning at Delman. It'll take him about five minutes to ride it to where the gully closes off. Right. And he'll come back along the ridge below us. Well, that mud of his might warn him we're up here. Well, he didn't earlier because the wind was blowing from them to us. And it's still blowing that way. He won't catch our scent, but we got to keep quiet. What do we do when he gets up here? When he gets into the tunnel, we'll run over there and jump down alongside the entrance with our guns ready. Steve, you stay here so he can't come up the van. But that dog... If he starts to come out toward us, give him a bullet. We'll trap that Marty and his dog, too. 
All right, come on, Rusty, let's go. Now be quiet when you get back. A short time later, Sergeant Preston pulled rain near the entrance to the shack. Oh, buggy. Come on, King. Let's go inside. As Preston entered the shaft, the great dog, King, started behind him. Then he suddenly whirled, barking, as his keen ears caught the sound of Gil and Rusty's steps moving forward above. King! What is this? King! My dear fellow, quick! The Mountie and the dog hurried back through the main tunnel, which was well lighted by the rays of the setting sun. They turned to the branch tunnel, which, though shadowed, was brightened by a lighted lantern hanging from a spike in the wall. Good, the tunnel turns here. A lighted lantern means they've been in here, too. We're safe now, fella. Can't get up that way, buddy. You got your trap. Watch that tunnel, Steve. Don't worry. I'm ready for him. There's an air shaft, but someone's up there. We'll close in when it gets dark, buddy. We'll fix you in that butt. Don't have a chance. Easy, King. I better look around the corner of the tunnel. He might try to sneak up on us. Sergeant Preston eased to the corner of the tunnel. He realized the situation was desperate. He pulled back his head as he saw the gleam of a gun at the tunnel entrance. A bullet whined close by. Back, King. Then he heard a slight sound that made him whirl and look toward the air shaft. Preston tensed. He hoped to get a shot at Steve's legs as the crook moved down the ladder. Suddenly, there was a dull thud and a groan from up in the air shaft. And Steve's unconscious body fell sprawling at the bottom of the ladder as his gun fell beside him. Sergeant, I'm coming down. It's the constable, King. I was coming to find you. Heard the shooting and saw a man on top of the hill. I circled around and got up there to investigate. Just after two of them went down toward Higgins' tunnel. Glad to see you, Sam. I sneaked up to the bushes above and saw the man in the air shaft. When I got a chance, I socked him on the head with my gun butt. We've got the advantage now, Sam. We'll leave King here in the tunnel, I'll go up through the air shaft and over the hill to get the two at the tunnel entrance. King can keep him from running into the tunnel. Good idea. Let's do it. King, stay here, boy. Stay until I call you. All right, let's go. Cautiously, the two Mounties went up the ladder to the top of the hill. Meantime, on either side of the tunnel entrance, Gil and Rusty stood pressed against the supporting beams on each side. Now and then, one or the other would peek around into the tunnel. Suddenly, a small stone fell from the slope just above the tunnel entrance, and Gil stepped back a bit and looked up, and then cried out. Hey, Rusty! Look out! There's two muddies coming from above! I'll show them! As Gil yelled and raised his gun, Sergeant Preston leaped. Get the other one, Sam! The Mountie landed squarely on Gil before he could shoot, bearing him to the ground, and the two men rolled on the ground, trading blows. The constable jumped from above with his gun ready, but Rusty had already turned and headed into the tunnel. This will settle you. No, no, no more. That's enough, no more. The other one went into the tunnel. Get him, King! What's this one, Sam? I'm King. Easy, fella. Here's the other one. I put handcuffs on him. Here, put these on the one King caught. Right. Look, you. You have no right. We'll move back into the new part of the tunnel where it turns. Come on. Come along, King. Look, Sergeant. Where there's been recent digging, there's gold in that ore. Yes, so we know Higgins didn't give up this mine. Ah, King's found something. Here in this corner near the air shaft, the earth is soft and sunken. That's enough, King. It's enough, boy. Sam, he's uncovered the edge of a parka. We've found Frank Higgins. But Gil and Steve planned it all. I, I met him on a trail a month ago and put him up at my shack. One day as we left the shack for a towel... Shut up, you fool. No. I won't hang for what you and Steve did. As we left the shack, we, we heard somebody yelling loud. We investigated and found the noise coming up through the air shaft in the bushes on the top of the hill. We went down and right into the tunnel. Old Higgins was in there dancing around because he struck gold. I see. Go on. They, they said they were going to stay and be partners with him. But the old man got mad and ordered him away. Steve slugged him and Gil put a bullet in him. And then they buried him right there. You're all under arrest in the name of the Queen for the murder of Frank Higgins. Oh, no, wait. They did it. Gil, Gil tried to kill Dellum, too. Why? Because he was coming to inspect the old man's claim. Oh. The court will decide what happens to you. Well, Sam, the mystery of the ridge has been solved at last. This case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Friday's adventure. Say, fellows and girls, 
Just think of having your very own models of the dead Dutchman gold mine on Sergeant Preston's Yukon Trail. Of Sergeant Preston's cabin. His dog sled and team of huskies to hitch up and move around. Of a Yukon riverboat with a paddle that turns. Well, hurry to your grocers. These exciting models and many more, actually 59 Yukon Trail cutout models, are yours on the big red and blue packages of Quaker Puffed Rice and Quaker Puffed Wheat. They're yours at no extra cost. Get every single one of the eight different Yukon Trail packages. These are not ordinary models. They're larger, easier to build. And you get the interiors of the buildings, the inside of the White Horse General Store, of a supply cache of the Dawson City Hotel. You even get scenery. The Klondike Mountain and Forest. The Indian Waterfalls. And remember, they're yours right now. Without it costing you a single extra penny. You get them right on packages of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. And only on the original, crisp, fresh, shot-from-gun cereal that is never sold in bags or bulk. They're at your grocer's now. Hurry and get the complete set of eight Sergeant Preston Yukon Trail packages of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Remember, fellas and girls, all may help through the Red Cross. So give a dime, a quarter, or more if possible. Yes, give whatever you can to the 1950 Red Cross Fund. This year, thousands of boys and girls like yourselves will need help. I can't begin to tell you all the Red Cross does, like helping people in fire and flood areas and in dozens of other fine services. So do your part. It's important. All may help through the Red Cross. Listen Friday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of 20 Little Indians. When the miners of Gold Flat were persuaded to build a new mission for Father Michel, we thought the men would lose their taste for violence and work. But there were some men in the town who were intent on robbery and ready for murder. The moment came when I saw a killer's gun trained on a little boy and King ready to give his life to save the child. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Friday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from gun. Remember, for delicious hot breakfast, enjoy Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. And here's why Quaker Oats is called the giant of the cereals. There's more growth, more endurance in oatmeal than in any other whole grain cereal. So make your hot breakfast nourishing Quaker Oats. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Join in the conversation by going to otrwesterns.com slash Discord. And don't forget to send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. This episode is copyright under the attribution, not commercial, share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and again, thanks for listening.